We're going to have a brand new series. And it's going to be a long series. It's going to be a series for 16 weeks. Wow, come on. Sino excited? For 16 weeks, we're going to talk about the Sermon on the Mount. It's entitled, uh, Redefined. And we're going to focus on, on, on the book of, of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, and 7. So yun, assignment nyo for the next three months and four months, okay? Kakabisaduhin nyo yung book of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, 7. And it talks about really redefining. Pag sinabi natin redefine, what does it mean? Sino may dictionary? It simply means to define again, baka kasi nakalimutan na yung meaning, or define differently this time. And the book of Matthew na pag-uusapan natin, yung Sermon on the Mount, this is actually a kingdom teaching. And Jesus will simply introduce to them a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. Kaya nga sa chapter 4, it talks about repent for the kingdom of God is coming. It's at hand. Now, it has been described that the Sermon on the Mount is the manifest of His kingdom. Kumbaga, ito yung manual for living a Christian life. A new kind of life, a new thing to live for or to die for. A new way of doing life in this kingdom. Kumbaga, under new management, okay? Ito na ngayon yung masusunod. May mga teaching kayo na tinuro before, na maaring na water down, na exaggerate, mali na ng focus. And Jesus' teaching will kind of put everyone on the same page. I'm gonna redefine to you ano ba meaning yan. What was the intention when it was given to you? The old is gone and the new has come. Kumbaga, Jesus is saying, kayo mga Kristiyano, <clears throat> na susunod sa akin, umayos kayo. Okay? <laughs> Kasi ako na bagong boss. He's a new way of doing things. You know how important belief is? The way you're thinking? Your belief drives your behavior, right? Kung alam mo yung bata ka, pinaniwala ka, gwapo ka. Kaya kung magkasta ka, gwapo ka, di ba? Kasi feeling mo, ikaw pinakagwapo eh. eh. Kasi puro babae kapatid mo. Eh, malama, sa lahat ng anak ko yan, pinakagwapo. Of course, di ba? So, your belief drives your behavior. Your conviction drives your action. That's why your kingdom thinking leads to kingdom living. This is very important. Because yung pung for the next uh, 16 weeks na pag-uusapan natin, okay, where Jesus teaches His people the ethical guidelines for life in His kingdom. You accepted me as your king. May mga bagay na hindi na kayo gagawin. May mga bagay na dapat kayong gawin. Right? So if you're gonna serve a new king, there are things na hindi na pwede. Hindi ka na pwede ngayon. Naka-shorts lang, pupunta ka rito sa king. Hindi ka pwede ngayon yung pinipik mo yung nose mo, pagkausap mo tong princess, stuff like that. There's gonna be a new guideline. And the guideline points to the quality of righteousness that characterizes life in the kingdom. Now in part, but also he's talking about the future. Kaya po napakahalaga na itong pag-usapan natin. For the next 16 weeks, we're gonna talk about the Sermon on the Mount. Right? Are you excited? Let's open our Bible. We're gonna look at the first teaching that redefined Jesus and that is, pinakasikat niyang sermon, the Beatitudes. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to pray afterwards. In verse 1, seeing the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. Verse 2, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Verse 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely. On my account, in verse 12, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let's bow down our heads. Father, we thank you. This teaching, Lord Jesus, that happened thousands of years ago still is true today. Lord, nawa sa puso namin to, malbawat kristyano. That the idea of being blessed, the idea of being happy, the idea of being satisfied, Lord, only comes from you. So, Lord, help us, Lord God, for the next 16 weeks. Na isa puso namin to, Lord God, hindi lang siya maging bunch of information, but there's going to be a revelation that will bring about the transformation in us. So, Holy Spirit, minister to your people 
individually. So that individually we will, we will submit to your will. Lord Jesus, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Nine times, look at the screen. It was nine times the word blessed was mentioned. Some says eight times, but because the other one just support the eight blessed. But what's, what's, ano na tutunan natin dito based on the Beatitudes? Number one, it's God who defines what blessing really is, right? Because the world has so defined ano itura ng blessing. The world is so watered down. Nabahing lang. God bless you. Bless ka na. Nabahing ka lang. Ano kinalaman ng bahing no anak ko, di ba? Anybody here? So what we're realizing here in the Beatitudes, He alone can give real meaning to the idea of blessing. Jesus unveils the foundation and character of life in this kingdom. You know the Beatitudes, the word Beatitudes, nagsim- nagmula po yan sa Latin word na Beatus, which simply means blessed. Now, what comes to mind Pag sinabi mo, I'm blessed, oh, you're blessed. What comes to mind? Exactly, nagmamano, mag-bless ka. Ayan, ayan, okay? So, anybody here, nag-bless ka na, nagma- and there's nothing wrong with that. But is that what blessing really is all about? What comes to mind pag may nakakita ka, oh, ino ko ako yung gitna man, blessed na bless siya. Maybe what you have in mind, ang yaman ng tao na to. Right? Di ba? Naka-bless na bless siya. Ah, Naka-iPhone 7 plus. Naka-iPhone 3210 lang ako. Anybody here? You feel that the more money you ha- that person has, the more blessed he is. Now, I'm not discounting the fact that it may be a part of a blessing. That you're richly rewarded financially. But is that all there is? Na pag may pera, blessed. Or maganda pangangatawan, healthy lifestyle, blessed ba yan? Eh kung ganun ang labanan, malamang hindi na ako blessed. Kasi yung six-pack ko bumaba, naging one-pack, okay? <laughs> <laughs> si Grace kasi nasa, paliitin mo na yan, han, ang laki na. Sabi ko, tagal kong pinalaki to, papaliitin mo lang. <laughs> but what's your idea of blessing? Anybody working here? Your idea of blessing, the one on the top. The COO, the president, the one who made it. The one who reached the corporate ladder at the top. Those are the people who are blessed, right? Again, I'm not saying, hindi siya blessed. If you're a COO, great. But is that all there is? Is that the metrics? Is that, is that the standard to gauge if a person is blessed or not? Maybe it's not about, uh, about the position. Maybe it's a place. You feel blessed pag nasa church. Can anybody hear? Kaya ang bait mo dito. Kaya may katabi mo. Tila mo, tila mo. Utangan mo yan. May sandang ka ba dyan? Tila, bibigyan ka niyan. Kahit hindi nagtatight siya, magpapahiram yan. Okay? Anybody here, you feel that this is blessed? Oh, para makarelate lahat. Oh, ito na lang. Yung EN, ayan. May kakaiba rito dito sa building na to. Pag pumapasok ako, hindi ako nagmumura. <laughs> Tingin ko, blessed tong lugar na to. It may not be a position. Maybe it, it's not a place. Maybe it's a person. You feel blessed. Yung mga pa- pare. You feel blessed pagka mga monk na namundo. Or simply, para makarelate din tayo, you feel blessed kasi, ayan, Pastor Junjin, hello, may halo yan, okay? Pastor, tinatago lang yung halo niya, pero matindi yan. I really want to honor that guy. Tindi ng trabaho sa discipleship. Madalas yung nakita ako sa stage, pero more than half of my job, napapadali because of that man. So, tingin mo ba, pag bless, it's a position because of wealth and all. It's a place, it's a church, or maybe it's people. Okay. Is that the blessing we're talking about here? Is that the only metrics para mag, mag, mag-gauge mo what the real blessing really is? Or yung blessing, ba can it be earned? Naalala nyo yung mga nakalakan nating religious background? Bibigyan mo yung pare para i-bless yung anak mo? Bibigyan mo yung pastor para i-bless yung bahay mo? Anyway, you think that the blessing can be earned? You think by doing good works, God supposed to be i-bless ka? God naman, nag-volunteer ako. No linggo, day of ko, yun, nag-volunteer ako, bless mo naman ako. And that's the reason why some of you can question you si God when bad things happen to us. Because you're thinking, agad ang dahil kong ginawa sa'yo, ba't sa akin pa nagkasakit? Ba't ngayon ba akong nagkasakit? Anybody here? Is that your idea of blessing? I'm gonna give you the real word, the original Hebrew word or the Greek word for blessing. It means makarios. And the word makarios means it's about people who are being specially what? Especially favored. Sabi nyo nga pa, favored. 
These are the people, I'll highlight the word specially, talagang handpicked yan by God, especially favored, fortunate, happy. Kasama naman po yung happy. Okay? Ria, mamaya mo na picture may isa pang word. And also, privilege. Pwede na, Ria. So, anybody here? Sino ba rito ayaw ng masaya? Anybody here gusto mo lumungkot ang buhay mo? Tapos mo yung kamay mo. Yung, ang goal mo, lumungkot forever. Yung gusto mo yung mga ending, mga namamatay, ay, ang saya. Gusto mo naghihiwalay yung sa pelikula, naghihiwalay yung mga asawa, ay, ang ganda. All of us wants to be happy, isn't it? We all want to be happy. In fact, according to Blaise Pascal, you know Blaise Pascal? Oh my God. Ninuno ni Piolo yan. Piolo Pascal, okay? Hindi, okay? Si Blaise Pascal, he's, he's a French mathematician, okay? Okay, nandiyan pa si Papa Piolo, hindi niya ninuno yan. Si Blaise Pascal, he's a genius. Sabi niya, all men seek happiness. This is without exception. Look at that. Whatever different means they employ, they all tend to this end. The cause of some going to war and of others avoiding it is the same desire in both, attended with different views. They will never take the least step but to this uh, object. This is the motive of every action of every man. Look up here. Even of those who hang themselves. Wow. This is kind of revealing, isn't it? We, don't, we all want to be happy. Is it? Tama ba siya? Gusto natin maging masaya. Whatever ending, whatever means, you want to be happy. Some of you are in your happy place pag nasa parlor ka. Some of you are in your happy place pag nasa nothing box ka. What makes you happy? Are you happy today? Tilami ka tabi mo. Tanungin mo, are you happy today? Masaya ka ba ngayon? <laughs> Hindi eh. Okay. Are you truly deeply happy today? Is it based on material stuff alone? I'll, I'll tell you, a good friend of mine, Halep, good friend, hindi niya ako kilala, pero gusto ko siya maging friend. You know Marcus Person? He's the guy behind Minecraft. You know the Minecraft, yung nilalaro ng mga anak nyo. He sold Minecraft sa Microsoft for $2.5 billion. Wow. And yet, look at, the, look at this. Being a billionaire is lonely. He's not happy. 2.5 billion. He outbidded Jay-Z sa isang um, apartment sa Hollywood for $70 million. Party siya ng party all night. Sabi rito, in a series of melancholy tweets early this morning, persons complain about how his life has become lonely and kind of empty. Wow. I mean, simpleng tao lang kasi siya. Naging billionario, and now he is empty. Sabi niya, Never felt more isolated than while hanging out in Ibiza with friends and partying the, with famous people. Because if you're here and you think more money will make me more happy, learn from this guy. He's filthy rich. Hindi niya kaya ubusin yung 2.5 million dollars niya. You know why? Because happiness or being blessed is not based on what you have. Being happy is not circumstantial. It's not based on circumstances. It's not based on what's happening. Happy ako kasi nakabili ko ng bagong iPhone. Na wala kahapon, malungkot na ako because of what just happened. Are you listening? Your happiness is based on circumstances. But you see, blessedness, makarios, is not based on circumstances. It's, it is a persistent state. It's not a fleeting feeling. Makarios came from the Greek word makar, which speaks of being happy in a way that is not dependent on external circumstances. Hindi, wala siyang kinalaman kahit magka-stage 4 cancer ako. Wala siyang kinalaman kahit di ko mabili yung iPhone. Wala siyang kinalaman kahit meron akong condominium na 20 million. It doesn't have to do anything with my situation. And some of you have believed that. May dalawa kang trabaho ngayon. Mag-a-abroad ka, iwan mo pamilya mo because you're thinking, makabili lang tayo ng condo, makabili tayo ng, ng kotse, mapag-aral yung mga anak, and then eventually, we're gonna retire happy, isn't it? You came to believe that the more stuff you have, the more happier, yan na, more na, happier pa, you're gonna be. And today, we're gonna redefine that. Are you excited? Para malaman natin. 
Ano ba talaga yung itsura ng magiging, ng pagiging happy, ng pagiging blessed? Because I'm going to tell you up front, this is counterintuitive. When you say counterintuitive, hindi mo magigets. Because the world has its own meaning deeply embedded sa utak mo at utak ko, and we tend to believe that. What I'm about to show you, what we're going to learn today, these are the people we should envy. These are the people that you, that you should, that should be congratulated. These are the people that should be emulated. These are the people na paglaki ko, gusto ko maging ganyan. Kaya lang, it trans contrary to the way we're wired. Again, your belief drives your behavior. Kaya ang dapat nating balik tarin ngayon yung paliniwala natin. You see, the, the paradox of the Beatitudes is that what is often taught as a misery is actually the key to happiness. Because marami tayong makita paradox dito ngayon. Sabihin mo, kalokohan to Jeff. Are you ready? Na malaman natin on how to be truly blessed. So let's open our Bible to Matthew 5, verse 1. Now, seeing the crowds, Jesus went to the mountain. I don't know. See, Jesus loves to speak sa mga mountain. Kasi mga inahunting sila ng mga, ng mga Pharisees. Gusto ng mga Pharisees. Talagang sila maging boss. Agalit sila kay Jesus. And, and, and Jesus often teach sa mga mountains. And means I'm beside the sea. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. Okay? This teaching, look up here, this is very important, is primarily for believers in Christ. Kung sila, you are the salt and the light. So, kung hindi ka Christian, hindi mo binigay yung buhay mo kay Christ, Good news, hindi para sa iyo to, alright? But if you see the value, ah, gusto maging kristyano. Ganyan pala yan, okay? So when Jesus was teaching this, He was self-focused on teaching the disciples. But then there are a lot of crowds, nag-speak na rin siya. Jesus described the ideal qualities of the people in the kingdom of God. Okay, so ilalatag niya ito na napakahabang teaching. Kaya nga 16 weeks natin to pag-aaralan. And this spiritual quality should be distinguishing character ng mga follower niya. And then after noon, tatlo pag-uusapan natin, that blessing, there's blessing in emptiness, there's blessing in self-denial, and thirdly, there's blessing in suffering. Pag tinilam mo to, this is what I call the paradox of the Beatitudes. It's counterintuitive. Para it doesn't make sense. Pag sinabi mo counterintuitive, it doesn't make sense. It will not pass the worldly standard on how to attain happiness. Sabi nga na isang writer about a commentary that I read while studying this, it's as if Jesus crept into a life's large display window, may mga tinda sa window, pinagpapalitan niya tag price. Yung mga mahal, ginawa niyang mura. Yung mga parang patapo na gamit, nilagay niya ng price na super million. So parang, parang si Jesus pumasok sa isang store, pinagpapalitan niya tag price. Yung mga parang seemingly walang value in the eyes of men, yun yung nilagay niya na so much value. And those valuable stuff, yun yung tinanggalan niya ng value. That's why this is really something na kailangan natin yung brain natin. Tinan mo kung, katabi yung, kat- kung gising pa yung katabi mo. Sikuhin mo kung gutulog. Okay, yan, nagising na. Alright, let's start. And Jesus said, He opened His mouth and taught them saying, look up here, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Wow. What do you mean by poor in spirit? <laughs> alam ko, poor ako, okay? Saka alam ko yung poor after niyan, five. Pero poor, five, six. Ano ba niya ibig sabihin poor in the spirit na yan, pastor? Parang nalito ako dyan, ha? What does it mean when you say a person is blessed when he's poor in the spirit? Because ang ganda ng promise, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you say poor in the spirit, it means there's this stance, there's this posture of utter nothingness before God. That you have nothing to offer before a rich, magnificent, spectacular, glorious, majestic, and awesome God. Kung maga pag dumating ka sa harapan ni Jesus, pagka ikaw ay pumunta sa kanyang presensya, wala kang pwedeng ipagyabang. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, oh God, nakita mo ba schedule ko, God? Binuo ko yung series na forward, God. Ha? Nine weeks yon God. Nag-podcast pa ako, so 18 weeks total nun, God. 
kabisado kay joke ni Pastor Jeff, yung insight ni Pastor Paulo, yung depth ni Pastor Christian. So God, <clears throat> 27 times ako nakinig na word mo. May request ako ngayon, mag-apply akong trabaho. Sagutin mo to. Hey, anybody here, you come to God as if God owes you something. Have you ever talked to a rich person? Yung talagang super rich. Yeah, I know, I'm talking to you every day, every Sunday. But have you been with an audience na super yaman na tao? For example, binigyan ka ng shot to have a lunch with Bill Gates. And this guy's worth, as we speak, 89.1 billion dollars. Kahit bilangin mo yung piso isang araw, tatanda ka, hindi mo bibilang yung pera niya. It's weird kung ka-lunch mo siya, at tapos pinagayabang may say ko mo, <laughs> Bill, nakita mo may say ko ko? Mahal to, pre. I mean, anybody here, ka-lunch mo si Bill Gates, tapos babayaran mo yung kinain nyo? Eh, malamang bilhin niya buong restaurant, pati ikaw, pati waiter, pati ninuno mo, bibili niya, kaya niya. Pati magiging anak mo. Anybody here, kaya mo... Tapos, yayabang ka sa parking. Bill, nakita mo ba yung bago kong Toyota Altis? Nakamag siya, Bill. <laughs> Hindi siya bumibili ng kotse. Bumibili siya ng island. Wow. Kaya niyang bumili ng planeta. Ibagsak sa'yo, okay? And, <laughs> and but here, yung magyayabang ka sa bilyonaryo, yung papasikatan mo ng mga accomplishment mo, it's the same thing when you enter into God's presence. We have nothing to offer. When you say, poor in the spirit, God, I'm here. I have nothing to offer. In fact, kung meron man yung kasalanan ko lang, yun lang ang kaya ko iharap sa'yo. You cannot, you, you cannot twist the arm of God. God, i-bless mo ko. I've been good. Hindi sa Santa Claus na may list si Santa Claus kung sino naughty or nice at may gift ka pag Christmas. When you come to God with the poor in spirit, that posture, I've nothing compared to you. I've nothing before you. I'm a worm compared to you. And not only Jesus said that, blessed are those who mourn. What does mourning mean? Because ang ganda ng promise, by the way, we don't have the time to na isa-isahin itong walo o siyam na to because of the lack of time. But, but I'm going to highlight a view of this. Blessed are those who mourn. Pag sinabi mong mourn, it's, a, it's, an, it's an experience of deep grief. Grief over what? You're mourning over sin. These people who are mourning, they are aware of the effect of sin and the reality of sin. You're mourning because alam mo na you have committed sin against God and you just have to come to Him spiritually poor. You know, I have to say this because some of you, look up here, this is very important. Some of you are living in sin and you look at sin na parang naiintindihan naman ni God. Yes, He is full of grace. Some of you na po-post pa sa Facebook, magka-live in a bundes and may Bible verse lang sa tabi, as if God, yeah, He loves you, but you forgot about something about Jesus. Yes, He is full of grace. Look up on the screen. He is also full of truth. You're living in a same-sex situation, and here you are, para okay lang yan, naiintindihan, niya, naiintindihan ni God, but He hates sin because those sin, that sin is the reason why He had to send His Son. Are you mourning? in your situation today. Oh, you got so accustomed to your sin na parang feeling mo, si God na magkakaintindihan kami. Okay lang to kay God. He hates sin. Yes, He's full of grace, but let me remind you, He's full of truth. He cannot overlook sin. That's why those people who are mourning because of their sinful state, those are the people who are really blessed. Remember the story in Luke about these two people. This is a parable made by Jesus. And there are two characters in the parable of Jesus. This, this, this Pharisee that's self-righteous. And you, you, you can read his verse in Luke 18, 11. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. <laughs> I thank you, God, that I am not like the other people. Katabi lang niya kasi yung, 
yung sinful na tax collector. They're cheaters and sinners and adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. And look at the verse 12. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. Anybody here come to God boastfully. <laughs> God, ah, magpa-fast ako. Meron tayong three days prayer and fast. Ah. Gagawin ko yung God para sa iyo, God. As if God needed something from us. Have you ever come to God with those sets of accomplishment? God, nag one one ako kanina. Oh God, meron akong one one God, one eh, eh. Guys, I, I hope you're, uh, you're hearing me right. You're doing that, but that's not to twist the arm of God. Na para magmamalaki ka kay God, just like this, this Pharisee, self-righteous Pharisee. Sabi niya, I fast, I give you tenth of my, my, my income. Look at the other guy. This is a tax collector, worse than a sinner. May sarili siyang category, tax collector and sinners. Now, offend ang mga sinner pag sinabi mong sinner yung tax collector. May iba silang category. Kung may impyerno, mas level 89 sila, basement 89. And look at how he prayed. But the tax collector he stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow saying, Oh God, be merciful to me for I am a sinner. Have you ever come to God like that? Or you're so into your sin, feeling mo, tanggap na ni God to. Naiintindihan niya tayo. I get that. Naiintindihan ka niya. Pero sana naiintindihan mo that He is a just God. He longs to give you the kingdom of heaven. But are you poor in spirit? Are you mourning over your sin? Look at the, 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 the effect. Look at the uh, outcome of this. Verse 14, I tell you, the sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. I love the word justified. May utang ka, somebody paid for it. Wala ka ng atraso. Sabi dito, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Look up on the screen. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Anybody here, you feel God owes you something? Careful ka lang. Baka humble ka ni God. Be careful. Baka dumating yung time. It's no more grace. It's really yung judgment time. I hope in prayer before dumating yung judgment time ni God, ma-embrace mo. Oh, nga no, God. Yes, you're loving, but you're, also, you're gracious, but you're also loving. Sin must be punished. That's why if you're living in sin today, you've been hearing this word, it's time. Sabi mo, it's time. It's time to let go. Ano may nintay mo? Baka dumating si Jesus mamaya. And you're here today. You're not poor in the spirit. You're not mourning. And blessed are those, let's continue, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Those who actively seek right standing with God. And Jesus is saying, no matter what your status in life, you must recognize your spiritual poverty before you can come to God in faith to receive the salvation He offers. You must come to Him. Wala ko yung offers you got. You must come to God, repent. The word repent means change of mind and change of direction. You're saying, Lord, I thought lumaki kong ganito. I thought anak ako ng pastor. I thought mabuti kong tao and this, it can earn a cookie points in heaven. It won't. Unless you come to God with utter nothingness. I have nothing to offer. Because there's a, there's a blessing in being empty. There's a blessing in emptiness. In this world where more is power, when you have more, you have more powerful. In this world, the greater the bank account, the more secure you become. In this world, the more power you have, the more secure you become. It's not. Unless you come empty before God, hindi kanya kayang i-feel. Are you listening? Unless you come empty before God, you cannot be filled by His righteousness. Because if there's pride in there, if there's envy, if there's unrighteousness in there, hindi, hindi pwede kasi mag-mix yun, pare. If you come to God empty, He'll be more than welcome to, to pour out His Spirit on you. It sounds oxymoronic, 
blessing, in emptiness, but it really depends on which kingdom are you part of. Kung nasa worldly kingdom ka, more is power. In godly kingdom, in the kingdom of God, empty before the king, that's more blessed. That's why on your, on your table, on your seat rather, you, you're going to take home that manual, knowing God, because we want to have more of God. We're going to do a three-day prayer and fasting. Okay, July 4 to 6, po tayo mag-start. Everything is there. It's online. It's available. This a booklet nyo. Please, take time to study the Word of God. Take time to come to Him empty. And Lord, fill me. Use me, Lord God. Next, there's also blessing in self-denial. Ang problema dito, this is again counterintuitive. When you say self-denial, it's really thinking less of yourself. And when Jesus said, blessed are the meek. You know what the meek means? The meek are the humble. Sino rito humbog? Humble pala, humble. Feeling mo humble ka. Kailan? Mula naging perfect ako, pastor. Wow. When you say meek, the humble, the gentle, the kind-hearted, the self-controlled. And if you're humble, if there's humility in you, you shall inherit the earth. You will be blessed. What does humble mean? What does humility mean? Ano ba yun? Jeff, ano ba yun? Self, ano ba yun? Parang ako, hindi ko na, wala na akong kwenta, buhay na tao. Napaka-humble ko, wala akong kwenta, wag niyo na akong kunin. Is that what hum- humility means? I don't think so. Humility, according to C.S. Lewis, is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Hello? Sino sa inyo rito may nakakwentuhan ka, lagi siyang sikat? Alam mo yun, yung pag-uusapan niyo weather, kanyari, panahon, tapos isisingit niya somewhere the discussion, siya na sikat. Alam mo, dati rin akong ganyan eh. Yung, oh, ikaw na, bigyan na ng jacket to. Oh. Di ba? Anybody here, yung usapan lagi na pupunta na ka-funnel sa kanya, tapos siya sikat, yung ginagawa niya, yung parang ikaw na kaganyan ka na lang. Oo oh, 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 na, ikaw na. Oo nga, kung may jacket lang ako, pinalupot kita eh. Straight jacket. Nakakita ka na ng taong gano'n. Siya lagi ang sikat. Yung lagi may kakilala. Alam mo, ganito. Oy, ano may kakilala ko dyan? Alam mo yung kia na tao? Kia, yung know it all? Yung alam lahat. Sa physics, sa math, sa geometry. Tanongin mo, find the least common denominator. Mahirapan yan. Okay, so, yung parang lahat. No, humility is thinking of yourself less. That's why these people are merciful. These people are compassionate. Isusubo na lang bibigay pa sa iba. To feel sympathy with the misery of another. That's what merciful means. And especially, sympathy manifested in action. Is anybody here? Maawain ka naman. Ang galing mo nga magbigay ng prayer and great. There's nothing wrong with that. Pag pray kita. But then the Bible also says, if you can do something about sa welfare nun tao, gawin mo. Because sometimes, the easiest way for us as Christian, pag-pray kita. E nagugutom yung sina- kausap mo. Pag-pray kita. Hey, himatay. <laughs> Sandali, pag-pray kita bago ka himatay. Lord, wag tong himatayin. O pag-pray natin, umulan na may mainom ka. Tapos ikaw naka-Starbucks. Eh kung wag ka mag-Starbucks, o oh, wag Starbucks, coffee bean tayo, okay? Kung wag ka mag-coffee bean, tas ibigay mo yun sa tao. Anybody here? The easiest way for us sometimes to, to be merciful sa tao, to pray, and great. But imagine mo, bro, I'll pray for you. Pero punta tayo ng mercury drug, bilhin natin yung gamot na sinasabi mo. Wow! Double punch yun, right? Because sometimes we're so good at that, ka, alam mo na may magagawa ka pero hindi mo ginawa. You see, the, that's the reason why we're saying there's blessing in self-denial. But this world's standard of blessing is different. The people are so self-absorbed. It's all about them. They are so self-centered. These people, they're thinking self-reliance. Kaya mo yan. You can do it on your own. Trust in yourself. You can do it. Build that self-confidence in you. And people will say, I'm a self-made person. Hindi ko maintindihan yung self-made. Ano yun? Ikaw yung gumawa sa sarili mo na ikaw pumasok sa sinipo mo na nanay mo. Paglabas mo, meron ka ng Rolex, may susi ka na ng apart. I don't know. But where in the world you get that self-made? The very oxygen we're breathing, galing kay God. And we cannot even exist a moment without God. 
He sustains everything. In, he makes sure tama yung timpla ng oxygen. He makes sure tama yung timpla ng gravity. And who we are to say, God, hindi ka na namin kailangan. Remember those scientists, sabi nila, Lord, hindi ka namin kailangan, God. Ang katalino na namin. Sabi ni God, talaga, kaya nyo na akong tapata. Oo oh, naman, Carl. Kaya nyo gumawa ng tao out of dust. <laughs> of course, nag- na perfect na namin yan. Sabi ni God, okay, di, unahan na lang tayo kung sino kaya gumawa ng tao from dust. Sabi ng mga scientists, go! Okay, ready? One, two, three. Sabi ni God, wait, 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 wait. Go get your own dust. Create your own dust. Kasi yung dust na yan, ako rin gumawa. That's the point. Wala tayong nagawa sa mundo na to. Lumabas ka, anong tala mo? Wala. Yung, ano tawag sa ganoon, yung pinuputol? Ko umbilical cord pinutol pa. Wala kang dala, mamamatay ka ganun din. And you think that people, I mean, do you think that people are so concerned about how you dress? You're so self-absorbed. Alam mo, at the age of 20, you care what everyone thinks. Anybody here mga 20 ka to 30? Alam mo pag tungtong mo sa edad ko 25? <clears throat> I sorry, 40. When you're 40, you stop caring about what everyone thinks. Si Grace one time. Pagkalalabas kami, of course, kunyari, SM Marikina lang, malapit sa amin. So, naka-t-shirt lang ako na pambahay, yung mga DNG lang na shirt or mango. <laughs> yung mga butas-butas, okay? So, okay. Sabi ni Grace, Grace, wala ka bang ano? Sabi ni Grace, okay ka lang ba? Naka-t-shirt ka lang? Okay lang yan. Pero when you're 60, you realize no one was ever thinking about you in the first place. Anybody here? Nakaedad ka? Pambira. All those years na I want to please people. Wala na pa silang pakialam kung match yung belt at shoes ko. Wala na pala silang pakialam kung... And, and, and you think people are so concerned about you? They're not. And some of you have lived your life thinking that the world revolves around you. Thinking na ikaw ang sentro ng planet whatever. Siguro planet of the apes dahil may hawig ka. Pero I don't know. Feeling mo sa'yo umiikot ang mundo. Feeling mo that everyone should submit to your ruling. Feeling mo that your idea is the best idea. I'm gonna tell you something. That's not what God had in mind when He said, You are meek. You are merciful. And blessed are those who are pure in their heart, for they shall see God. You know, the pure in heart, it means those with people with integrity, with moral courage, with godly character, who will stand on what is right. Hindi ngunit lahat nag-uwi ng copon ban, ikaw mag-uwi ka na rin ng paper clip sa office. Pare, pare, wala na kayong rank and file dito. Mag-uwi rin ako ng fax machine. <laughs> Meron pa ba, no? Uwi ko itong, ano, yung dispenser. Kailangan to sa bahay. Doesn't mean everybody's doing it, it's the right thing. Anybody here? Nadala ka because sa office ganon, or sa campus ganon. Sa campus, lahat nagbabasa ng pornography. That's it, misasama ka. Because you're a man with a pure heart. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Those who work to bring peace, reconciliation, or healing to broken relationships in the home, outside your homes, in the marketplace, in church, in society. You are peacemakers. Hindi ka mapakali pag merong na-offend. Hindi ka mapakali pag merong away sa, mga, sa office. Hindi ka mapakali pag ka merong, alam mo, may inggitan sa dalawa. Hindi ka mapakali pag ka may gossip na nagkakalat sa opisina. You're gonna address the issue because you want to be peacemakers. And most especially pag ikaw yung offended, di ba, the Bible says, because some of you believe, this false belief, na time heals. Na-offend niya ako. Hindi na lang pag-uusapan. Dating tayo maayos din yan. Most especially sa Pinoy because we're not confrontational. I'm gonna tell you something. The Bible is very clear. Pag may offense ka sa isang tao, let's say na-offend ka, okay? I don't know, sinabihan yung, ano ba yung batok mo? Choco na batok o batok na choco? I don't know paano ka na-offend. Or niran ka sa Facebook, whatever. The Bible says, you come to church, naalala mo may offense yung isang kaibiga mo. Iwanan mo raw yung offering mo sa church. Look for that person. Make peace with him. Tapos bumalik ka sa offering mo. And then God will honor that. Are you, are you listening? Ganon kahalaga yung reconciliation kay God. That when you're offended or you have offended someone, make sure you're gonna make it right with that person. And then go back to worshiping God. 
So time doesn't heal anything. If you're thinking that time heals, it's not. Because God loves and blesses those peacemakers. You know what? If you're the offended person, here's a verse for you. Kung born again ka. Kung hindi ka born again, great. Magtalim ka ng galit, maging bitter ka, okay lang sa yan. Because this is only for Christian. A person's wisdom yields patience. Where does wisdom come from? The fear of the Lord. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Every time you feel offended because you value the relationship more than the, the offense, I'm going to overlook that offense. Bro, I just want to let you know, wala sa akin yon. Yung pinost mo sa Facebook, alam ko medyo reactionary ka. Um, I just want you to know, wala sa akin yon. So wag ka mahiya na, nakikita tayo, but, but I just want you to know, I have forgiven you. The, 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 the born-again Christian are the one who will overlook offense. And people will, magkakamata ulo, bakit siya pa yung ng tawad? Ba't siya pa yung nag-forgive? Hindi ba siya yung binadrip mo? Ewan ko sa mga born-again yan, ganyan talaga sila. Because they're peacemakers. Because there's blessing in self-denial. It's not about me, it's about the, the king that I serve. It's not about pleasing myself, it's not about pleasing me, it's pleasing the king in the kingdom. And the question is, saan ka kingdom? Dalawa lang yan. Kingdom of darkness or kingdom ni light. Ng light. Kingdom of God. So walang, walang gitna. Walang king lang. King or dumb lang. Then, kingdom. <laughs> Wala yung gitna. Pag linggo na, sa kingdom of light ako. Pag lunes, pornography muna ako. Sa it, it, it cannot be. Niloloko mo lang yung sarili mo. It's either you're in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. And blessed are those who persecute you for righteousness. Okay, look up on the screen. For righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because he's giving a heads up to his disciples. Because they're going to be burned at stake. A few years after Jesus left, the persecution was so hard. I mean, papakain sila ng buhay sa leon. Napanood nyo yung movie, right? Na, the gladiator. Sa mga born again po yun. Yung mga pinapakain sa leon, mga born again yun. Kasi if, if, kung may makakasalubong ka na mga, na mga uh, uh, romance, pag Hail Caesar, hindi mo binati na Hail Caesar, Papakain ka sa leon. Because you're not acknowledging that Caesar is God. And the born again doesn't acknowledge any other God other than God. So as simple as that, hindi ka nag-reply na hail Caesar, papakain ka. And Jesus was giving them a heads up. You're going to be persecuted for my sake. But don't worry, you're blessed. The easiest way sa campus or sa offices, makisakay ka na lang. Right? Born again ako sa victory pag Saturday. Pag Monday to Friday, sakyang malay trip ng mga worldly na tao sa'yo. So pag dito, nagbabait-baitan ka lang dito. Delikado yung nagbabait-baitan. Ha? Baka ang ending mo, langit-langitan lang din. Hindi totoo langit. Parang hindi to langit. Ha? Eh, nagbait-baitan ka lang kasi. Kaya hindi din to totoong langit, pre. But seriously, have you ever, have you ever compromised your faith sa office? Because you persecute ka. Have you ever compromised your faith sa campus? Because they're telling bad things sa born again. Ah, born again, ah. But ayaw pa may pag-sex sa girlfriend mo. Ah, siguro ba din ka? O siguro ano ka, ano? But ayaw pa sex Ganda-ganda ng girlfriend mo. Ano ka ba? Hmm, sa akin niya. Anybody here? Nag-give up ka? Nag-compromise ka ng faith mo because of persecution? You know what? There's blessing in suffering. If you're suffering because of righteousness' sake, you're blessed. You're favored. You are happy. You are enlarged to receive the blessing of God. You are favored. You are in the right spot. And tell that you are in the sweet spot to receive God's blessing. Parang oxymoronic na naman. Suffering, blessing, it doesn't mix. Exactly. It doesn't make in the eyes of the world. But it makes perfect sense in the eyes of God. If you suffer for His sake. You know what? In other uh, uh, teaching, the Beatitudes, the word is, is, there's a word now. If you're suffering now, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, 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 mourning now. Because people are just living for the now. Not thinking that there's a world to come. There's an age to come. Not thinking pagdating po ni Jesus and His second coming, we're gonna live throughout eternity. There's a lot of work to be done. 
Kala kasi ng iba, magiging heaven, ano, magiging cherubim tayo, may, may papanapanal tayo sa ulap. Sa hallmark lang yun, ng mga cards. Ano hallmark? Mga millennials talaga. Ano yun? Para nung araw, gusto mong magpadala sa mahal mo, may card, okay? Hindi ganun yung mangyari po. Pagdating ni Jesus on His second coming, we're gonna do a lot of stuff. We're gonna be with Him throughout eternity. And this new heavens and new earth, bababa dito, and it's gonna be a different ball game. And if you're just living for the now, you're gonna miss that. And these people who focuses on that, they're willing to suffer now. Because the kingdom of God is about to come. There's a greater kingdom that's coming. So you can settle for the now, enjoy ka, sex and all, drugs, greediness, envy, go for it. I mean, kahit 100 years ka mabuhay, live with that illicit relationship, great, gawin mo. What, 100 years? Compared to eternity? I don't think so. You see, sacrifice is only sacrifice kung lugi ka at the end, right? Kaya magiging sacrifice yung kapalit, parang lugi ko ah. But it's not a sacrifice kung yung kapalit, greater. Ang tawag the reward. So you're not sacrificing now. Kung wini-withhold mo yung premarital sex na yan, ay gusto mo, it's not sacrifice because you're gonna have greater marriage and intimacy pagkakinasal ka. So it's a reward, it's not sacrifice. Baliktad lang tayo mag-isip. You want to enjoy the now. But there's so much ahead in the future. So let me end this. Blessed are you when others revile and persecute you and other all kinds of evil against you falsely. Here's the word, on my account. Some of you are being persecuted because sa kalokohan mo. Some of you are suffering because sa mga pinagagawa mong kalokohan. I'll tell you something. This is different. On God's account. On Jesus' account, you are suffering and persecuted. And, and as we end, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Wow. For so, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. There's a greater reward. A suffering is only a suffering. A sacrifice is only a sacrifice. Kung lugi ka at the end. But this is not sacrifice. You're enjoying every moment of, of, of self-control and, 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 and being in mourning and being poor when you approach God because there's a greater reward waiting. So as I end, happiness is not based on circumstances but on His promises. You're looking forward to it. Kaya kaya ko mag... I, even if the worlds look at it na hindi blessing, I, 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 can, I, can, I can wait. I can be humble. I can be meek. I can be peacemaker. I will not do revenge. Hindi ako gagante. I'm gonna seek peace to everyone if it's possible. That's what the Bible says. And then, a greater promise is waiting. And you're gonna say, wow, buti na lang. Yung 80 years na nandun ako sa earth, in my physical life, I obey the kingdom of God. I live under His Lordship because believe me, eternity is waiting for us. Whether you believe it or not, by the way, kung hindi ka niniwala sa eternity, it doesn't matter. It's gonna happen. We're gonna live in eternity, okay? It's eternity apart from God or eternity with God. So you, you choose, you, you, you pick. Ang problema lang, the clincher, the catch, how you live your life here on earth determine kung saan ka pupulutin toward eternity. And some of you are thinking now, mukhang niloloko ako ng pastor na to. Ah. <laughs> Ang sarap kayang tatlo asawa. Ang sarap kayang mabuhay ng ganito. Ang sarap, because you're thinking about yourself. Ang sarap kayang negosyong ganito. Pasok lang, pasok lang. Because you're thinking about yourself. I'm gonna tell you something. Coming to church doesn't make the cut. Kung kakala mo, pumunta ka rito every Saturday at napipili sa isigad sa church attendance mo, I think your theology is wrong. It's how much you obey that really matters. It's not the attendance, it's obedience. How much are you obeying? Because I don't want you to come face to face with God and He'll say, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoer. And you're going to say, Jesus naman, I come to you. No, 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 I never knew you. 
away from me, you evildoer. You don't want that to happen. That's why we're doing it now, right? Let's all stand on our feet today. These three things, the blessing in emptiness, the blessing in self-denial, the blessing in suffering. You see, when Jesus said, when Jesus, in Philippians 2, have this in mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. See, Jesus spoke, he was, he's God, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a thing to be grasped. If you look at his humility, he humbled himself, emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Imagine, hindi siya pinanganak as a king or as a prince. He came here as a baby, in a manger, servant, being born in the likeness of man and being found in human form. He humbled. There's a word. He emptied. He humbled himself. Why did he do that? Of course, because he's looking for something far better, far more rewarding. In Hebrews 12, we got a glimpse of that. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, and in joy, endured the cross. Oxymoronic again. Joy, cross, it doesn't mix. It's not a sacrifice. You know why? Because even that, he can endure because the ultimate goal is to please the Father. Because the Father loves you and me. The Father wants you to be reconciled to Him. And Jesus did that to please His Father. Because He knew it will bring joy to the Father that we will be reconciled. So there's a joy in suffering. There's a joy in being humble. There's a joy of being empty before God. Because ultimately, God is pleased. And the King in the kingdom is the one whom we want to please. As we start this series, I know medyo mabigat, ano, pare? Alam ko, iba sa inyo, medyo, baka hindi na bumalik next week. But please, stay with me. Read the Word of God. Read on chapter 5 of Matthew and really dwell on the Word. And then ask God to reveal Himself to you. Come to Him empty. Mourn in that sin. Seek Him with an attitude, Lord, I am nothing. I want, I want to know you. Let's bow down our heads. Lord, we know it's hard. Lord, parang sinisimulan pa lang namin yung series. Parang it's all counterintuitive. Parang lahat na to, Lord God, parang it will push me na hiwalayan tong kasama ko. It will push me na wag gawin tong mga bagay sa negosyo. It will push me to really put you or put myself under your Lordship. So Lord, alam namin mahirap. Iniisip pa lang namin mahirap na Lord. But Lord, help us. Help us today. By your grace, because you did it first to us. You humble yourself. You empty yourself for us to please the Father. So Lord, help us. Give us the grace to, to, to do this, Lord God. It's going to be hard, but it's worth it at the end. It's not going to be a sacrifice. It's a rewarding moment. Because we'll see that greater is the reward if we obey you today, now. We're going to be happy. We're going to be blessed. Not on worldly standard, but on your standard. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen, amen.